Alrighty. Okay. All right. Um, I need my pencil sharpener. <clears throat> Hello, tea cozies. We're back with some coloring today. Um, I do not have my nails painted today. I know a lot of ASM artists tend to have really nice nails when they're doing their videos, which makes sense. But, um, I personally don't really like painting my nails that often. I use my hands a lot, like with computer work and uh, office work at my job. So I just feel like having nice looking hands doesn't really... It's not that convenient for me because it's gonna get chipped soon anyway, so I only rarely paint my nails like when I just feel like it or for special occasions. Um, okay, so it's been a while since I've worked on this and I can't remember exactly what I was going to do with the colors. Um, I know I wanted to do a gradient with both of them. So, let's see. Um, yeah, I guess I could start on purple instead. I think a lot of you commented that you would prefer me to do these videos, uh, with talking in it. And, um, I think the view count on those videos says as much as well. So I'm not sure if I do want to do a no talking version. We'll see about that. I do get a lot more done coloring when I'm not talking. So, uh, I guess I could talk about what I have been doing lately. Um, most of this month I've just been playing video games. And I'm starting to feel a little guilty about that. Uh, like I've spent hours and hours playing video games. <laughs> um, so doing some ASMR stuff makes me feel a little better about that. Because it's productive. <laughs> and it's not just for my own entertainment. Um, so, my video game binging started a few weeks ago. Uh, one of my college roommates, she sent this funny video about, uh, Planet Zoo. And, okay, just making sure that I'm recording. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing this without recording anything, because that would suck. Anyway, uh, she sent a funny video about Planet Zoo, and I was like, this actually looks really fun. And I want to play it. But, um, at that time, the game was on sale for about over $50, and I was like, I mean, I guess the graphics are nice. <laughs> but I didn't really want to shell that much out just for something I would be playing just for fun. I mean, that's what games are for anyway, just for fun. But then I saw on Humble Bundle that they had the game on sale for half off and I told them about it. And then I started jumping, I jumped into the game pretty quickly. And it's a... Uh, <laughs> It has a pretty steep learning curve. There's so much to do at the beginning and like so many different mechanics that you have to take into consideration, like animal welfare, how happy the guests are, because guests are the ones that you get the money from. So you have to cater to their needs, like put bathroom stalls in, or if they're, they're like always thirsty and hungry, they never get enough food. So you can, um, have your mechanics research, 
like what kind of food do these people like and put different stalls out lots of stalls for both food and the toilet whatever so after I got over the initial learning curve of the game, it was really addicting, and I lost so many hours in it. Um, like, time just flew by so quickly. Uh, on Sundays, me and my college roommates, we play, uh, we watch Korra, because they haven't seen it. And we play Stardew Valley Co-op. Um, but like two weeks ago or so, uh, one of them was so caught up playing Planet Zoo that she forgot <laughs> about uh, our meet meetup time, which we're doing online because we're still in the pandemic. So she was like, Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so sorry. Like, one moment it was one o'clock, and then all of a sudden it was dark. <laughs> and then, um... She also asked, uh, like, if we know any good... Sim-type games. Like Stardew Valley. And one of my writing friends recommended my time at Portia. Which is weird, because when I started playing it, I, I swear it's pronounced Portia, because, I mean, like, the name. Um, but some of the characters pronounce it Portia, and I'm like, hold on here. <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> Why aren't the pronunciations more, um, consistent? But anyway. So yeah, then I got really into my time at Portia, and, um, I mean, it probably would have been nice to know from the beginning that the game goes as quickly as you allow it to be. So, like, I can totally put off certain, um, missions until later, until I'm better equipped to make the stuff that the others need. So, my first two months in the game, because I was just going at it and talking to everybody and picking up all these different missions... quicker than I could actually handle them. Higgins got uh, the f number one slot for the Builder Award at the beginning of the month. Which is fine, but then I beat him out at the beginning of the year, so whatever, Higgins. Anyway, there are a lot of characters that you can Mary in that game, which is really surprising compared to, uh, like, Stardew Valley, which is only a few characters, and as much as I enjoy Stardew Valley, I feel like you don't really have great male candidates for marriage. I like the ladies a lot better. However, um... In my time at Porsche, I'm not sure, like, who I want to marry yet. Like, I haven't even begun seriously dating. That's usually how it goes in, like, the Harvest Moon type, scheme, type games. I do a lot of, like, the mission-based stuff before I really get into dating and know, getting to know the characters. So... I usually save dating for last, even though, it, um, like, getting to know the townspeople is probably my favorite part of these games. I just save it for last. <laughs> um, so when it came to deciding on who I wanted to marry in Stardew Valley, uh, like, 
in my first game, I think. Of course, I ended up dating everybody I could just to see like who who's the best fit for me. Like, how will I know unless I date them all? But that is not real life dating advice. Do not take that and apply it to your real life. Um, video games are substantially different. So, generally, I do think the girls are better candidates and might be because the creator's a dude. I think he's a straight dude. But, yeah, I feel like the guys just, they're mostly immature and just, They don't have their shit together. Am I allowed to say that in ASMR? So for me, I guess, like I just wanted a more mature person. Um, so that kind of rules out <laughs> like Haley. I mean, I guess she has a nice emotional arc or whatever. She's like, oh yeah, I'm going to give away my clothes now. Um, and also Abigail. <laughs> I think she's probably one of the youngest uh, dateable characters. So I guess then you have the choice of, like, Elliot, Harvey, and Shane, because those are the older guys. And, well, Shane really doesn't have <laughs> his life uh, together. Should I make this green? It's not too cliche, but I feel like... I do want a green caterpillar. Because I have a pink one over here. I mean, Shane does make for an interesting character, but for me anyway, he is not husband material. So that crosses him off the list. And then there's Harvey and Elliot. And Elliot, I... I feel like he's too much of a cliche when it comes to, like, the romantic writer type. And, like, he never really resonated with me as a player. So then I guess when it really comes down to like, who were my top candidates for marriage in Stardew Valley, I would have to say it was down to Harvey and Emily. And I really like Emily because uh, her in-game uh, portrait, she has like such a cute smile and she's so delightful about how she approaches people. And, um, I thought it was really nice compared to the other characters. Like, you have her sister, Haley, who I feel like maybe uh, cares a little too much about <laughs> what people think of her. And, actually, speaking of Haley, my least favorite character of the dateables is Alex. I don't know never really appealed to me. I always thought he was a stuck-up jerk. So, um, and with the Stardew Valley mod, uh, that gives the characters seasonal outfits, which I installed for my game. I really like Emily's outfits. Like, it actually makes her come across as, like, the fashionable one that she wants to be. 
even though like her sister is the one who consumes the products, but she actually likes making them, so that's cool. Um, I can't actually remember her, was it the Eight Heart event with her? Something about bears in a tent or something? But anyway, so I'm obviously getting down to like the process of elimination. There's just Harvey left and I can't really say what it is. I think maybe it's probably the hot air balloon ride. It was just so cute. Like when his eyes bug out and then he like throws his arms around the player and he's like oh god heights <laughs> and i'm like oh my god that's so cute um okay but first of all i will say that i was not a fan of his mustache i hated it at first i'm like it's like a pedo stash and i don't like it <laughs> But it grew on me in a way that mustaches actually don't grow on me. And I just feel like he's the best husband or spouse material because like, he actually wants to be in a family and he will help you around the farm. But he does go to his regular job still. So it's not like he, he gave up a lot and you're just, you're mutually adding something to each other's lives. And I feel like that's how real relationships should be. You're not looking for somebody to fill in a void. You're looking to share what you have. So back to my time at Portia, I guess, uh, I have no idea who I want to end up with. Um, I actually became best friends with Papa Bear first because when I looked at the description for Royal Honey, it said that it's Papa Bear's favorite, so I tried giving it to him, and he loved it. So whenever I was chopping down trees, I gathered some royal honey, and I gave it to him the, the every day. And he loves it. <laughs> He's such an adorable character. I like his bathrobe and <laughs> it's, it's funny. And how he does this little dance when he catches a fish by the river. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any um, friendship perks. Um, speaking of which, I of course became best friends with the animal residents of town before the the human residents. Probably just like real life. Hmm, no, do I, do I want to go this way? Green? Hmm. So yeah, I have started feeling a little guilty about um, not being a productive human of society 
for the past few weeks since I've been binge playing. And it kind of hit last night when um, someone at my favorite places to sub asked if I could fill in for her today, actually. Um, but it was like already in the late, late in the day by the time I got to check in my email. And it was still too short notice for me. As a sub, I like enough notice that I can prepare my lunch for the next day. Cause yo, I gotta eat. I get cranky if I'm, you know, if I'm not well fed. <laughs> Even though that position is relatively easy. Oh, here's my cat. Hey baby. You sniffing around? Um, not sure if the camera picked up her nose at the corner. She was sniffing my pencils. Um, but anyway, uh, I was approached to voice in a project and I told the creator that, um, I would have, I should have Thursday and Friday, because that's what it is today, um, what those days available for me to do any pickup recordings, if necessary. So, on the one hand, now he did ask me to do some uh, retakes, and I'm just waiting on that while I make this video. So while it is a great opportunity, I'm missing out on my real job. But at the same time, I feel like it's going to make up for itself. So I'm trying not to feel too bad. I'm trying not to feel, be too hard on myself for playing video games for like an unhealthy amount. <laughs> um, Actually, I don't know if I want to talk about this, but I did recognize quite a few names of the voice actors in my time at Portia, and that made me a little bummed. It's like, oh, how come I didn't know about this opportunity? Why didn't I audition for this? And I don't really know what was going on my, in my life at that time. I'm not really sure when auditions were open. And it made me feel a little bad about myself, but I'm trying not to get down about it too badly. Um, and that reminds me of a conversation I had with a high school friend who said, uh, like, don't regret the paths you've taken in life. And, because I was talking to him, like, if I hadn't been so focused on trying to pursue my writing career, maybe I would have gotten farther in my voice acting career. But if as much as I love voice acting, as much as I love bringing a character to, to, to life, for somebody else. Writing still comes first. Um, so, I'm trying not to be too hard on myself when it comes to missing opportunities and putting myself out there more because 
my setup for recording is I cannot record when I want to all the time. So that's the big limitation on like what kind of projects I can take on. But anyway, said friend actually was my prom date for from in high school. Funny story. He is three hours older than me. We have the same birthday, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and... Uh, like several times he would ask me to like homecoming or whatever and I would just be like no nah. just cause like dances weren't really my thing it's fun to get dressed up and that's why I did go to prom um, so when it came to prom I was like you know I'm, I'm like going with my friends anyway but like what if I just had a prom date because that's the thing you do, or whatever. Um, maybe you should do purple over here, yeah? So, I was like, you know, this friend would make a good date. He is a good guy, and I enjoy his company. And whether he was serious or not, he did ask me to homecoming a few times. So I was like, why not take initiative and then I can ask him to prom. And this was senior year and uh, in our English class, it's kind of, it was an IB class, so it was kind of the point in the year where we weren't really <laughs> during, doing a lot of serious work, I guess. So there's a lot of goofing off in class, and at the beginning of one class, I was like, hey, I have an announcement to make. And some kid pulled out his phone and started recording it. Like, I don't even know if that recording exists somewhere. Um, and I was like, yeah, I asked my prom date to prom right there in front of class. Which I feel like is so gutsy of me. Of course, like, he said yes, and I made a fabulous dress. Because I sew... Um, <laughs> I really do like that dress. It was like burgundy with gold trim and it had, it was a corset top with a ribbon that tied at the back of my neck and I used like this burgundy checkered chiffon and I made a really thick suet made into a big bow at the back of my neck. With like, um, I think it was a two-tier skirt with gold trim on e on the end of each layer, and the underside was sparkly gold. I actually started learning how to sew back in junior year of high school. Um, my mom used to make us a lot of clothes when we were younger. So I learned from her and I wanted to make my Halloween costume that year. Wasn't great, but it was a good starting point to learn how to, how to do things. Hmm. Well, I was so very rudely interrupted by my phone and work calling me. My, it was an automated system telling me that there was work to do today. And I'm like, no, I am in the middle of recording something right now. I'm using my phone to record. Um, and the annoying thing is, I set it up so I'm on do not disturb. Yet, my phone thinks it's okay for the automated phone system to be like, Sure, you can call through. <sighs> and, well, 
So yeah, I'm a substitute for the school district, and one of the most annoying things about taking substitute jobs is when they put in a position on the day of, and technically I have two hours from accepting the job to show up at the school site. But I don't really like doing that. I'm sure they would prefer somebody to show up late than not to show up at all. But the way I am, I usually make plans for the day. If I, if I know I'm not working. So... I don't like taking jobs in the middle of the day. And sometimes these job positions are just like for two hours or something because they need to take their kid to an appointment or something like that. And in those cases, oftentimes they just let the other people in the office know that they're taking off for lunch or whatever. Um... So they don't really need somebody else to be there. And so I feel less guilty about not taking those kinds of jobs. I think this part is a leaf, I'm not sure. <laughs> Plus with the pandemic, um, I think they're starting to allow some kids to go back to the school sites instead of doing distance learning. Um, and that's well and fine. I do understand that a lot of parents want their kids to be back in school just because they can't really afford to stay home with their kids. Like they have their own jobs to go to. But anyway... Some of the school sites aren't very good about wearing their masks properly. And it really bugs me that people don't understand that they need to cover their noses too. Covering your mouth because you think you're spewing out droplets everywhere isn't good enough. You also breathe out through your nose. Sure, I might have been vaccinated because I'm participating in the vaccine trials, but I don't know for sure. I don't want to take any risks just because I feel like I'm safe. I'm just making sure I'm still recording again because... <laughs> Work. Erg. Honestly, I probably enjoyed subbing a lot more when, um, when I first started working for the school district, when I was more optimistic about my writing career, because I really like the flexibility of deciding when I want to work, and making that work around my writing schedule. But... Yeah, then, um, then I... got my first literary agent and it didn't work as out as well as I would have liked. But that definitely made me a lot more jaded about a lot of things. Like the publishing industry itself, of course. But then also about like what I do and 
I feel like I was doing a lot better about being kinder to myself and not, uh... Having too high expectations of myself to be productive and do things that are worth something. When I was playing video games, I could shove a lot of those ideas to the back of my head. But... Now that I've missed out on a work opportunity, I feel a little bad about it. My cat just walked by, so if you heard little sticky pads, that was her feet. Maybe it's because of the pandemic, but I definitely don't feel as comfortable going to work these days. Like, I'd rather just stay home and produce <laughs> videos. Um, and I'm hoping soon it'll pay off. And even if I am getting better opportunities by, like, putting my voice out there, Thanks to Moon, by the way. You know what you did. So, thanks. <laughs> Even if I am, like, getting, like, these opportunities to do more voice work. And I'm really grateful for that. It's, I don't know, this annoying part of me that's, like, your family doesn't think that's respectable work because you stay home to do it. You don't go to a real job. And I know that's like really harmful to say because as the pandemic has proven, you don't need to be in office to be able to do work. Um. would prefer to have an unreliable and sporadic paycheck doing stuff that I love than to be miserable at a 9 to 5 job that looks good on paper Some people are okay with that kind of thing because they don't need the creative outlet. Not saying that they aren't creative people, it's just that they haven't decided to make that <laughs> their life's work. Of course. If money were no object, then I would just create all the time. But alas, we live in this world with the economy that the boomers have left us. Am I bitter? Absolutely. the heart of the stories that I write, a lot of it <laughs> comes down to being what it's like to be a millennial and being in inheriting all of these worldly issues 
and being told that it's our fault. Stop it! Get out of the way! Move it! Move! Get out of the way! You're gonna mess up my stuff! Bub! Baby, get out! You're gonna mess up my camera! Hey, come on, get off! No, that's not a toy! Oh. You little brat, stay here. Well... <laughs> Right, I was working on this fan. Wanted to make sure the camera didn't my, my cat didn't mess up the angle of my camera. Maybe she did. Um it's weird how I have it set up. I've got it propped into a foam roller. But it was a little tricky trying to get the angle right. my friends is starting to play Chrono Jigger for the first time and I kind of envy that to be able to experience it for the first time again. It's one of my favorite games of all time and her boyfriend's too. So 
she just got to the part where she landed in um, 600 AD. And I just love the part when you when you go out for the first time, when you step off of the mountains and go into town and you're like, um, what happened to the Millennial Fair? And people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and you're like, where the heck am I? And then the song wind scene plays in the background. It's so lovely. I don't know, there's something about that song. Maybe because it's so nostalgic for me, it's just like... I want to be able to experience something like that again. Um, anyway, last night, night, she sent me a screenshot saying that she's lost, and it was an image of Chrono standing outside of the Guardia Forest, and I totally remember this being a problem when I first played it, not knowing that you can go into the dark spots of the forest. <laughs> um... So I circle the image and I'm like, you can go in there. I personally feel like the story still holds up today. Like the, not only the story, but the whole gameplay. It's actually a pretty short game. I feel like maybe perhaps it's not as mind blowing perhaps, as Final Fantasy VII, which I feel like is still the most popular Final Fantasy game. But there's just something so special about it. I think I've spent a lot longer on this, coloring this page, so I gotta switch over so I don't And pencil needs a little sharpening. Hmm. to know why I don't film myself when it comes to making ASMR videos. Primarily it's because I just don't want to deal with the fuss of having to set up my camera and sync the audio and post and everything like that. It's fine for this. It's a little bit of a learning experience. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't want to deal with the problems of, um, filming equipment and setting up lighting and, and then if I were to show myself, I'd have to think about, like, costuming and makeup and background. And I don't really have a very pretty place to film. Um... I had a place of my own and could record whenever I wanted and make the set look just like I wanted, maybe. But even then, I feel weird about showing my face. I don't think that's something that I really want to do. Um, hmm. Can I make this? 
green, but what kind of green? Darker green. And the reason I don't want to show my face is because I feel like a lot of these successful ASM artists, like, they're gorgeous, and I'm pretty sure that helps when it comes to, um, their view count. But I personally just don't really feel like, uh, trying to sell my looks over the kind of work that I produce. So for me, it's more like a matter of the quality of work. over something superficial. Plus, I'm not a filmmaker. Again, I just don't really want to deal with the fuss of all that equipment and trying to get everything just right when I could just be in my lounge clothes recording stories and nobody could tell what I'm wearing. <laughs> Unless it made some nice crinkly sounds. I used to be a lot more vain, and I feel like if I had started this channel eight years ago, maybe, like, I would be all up for, like, showing my face and everything, but it's just, like, I've just come to understand that, you know, looks aren't everything, and I don't want it to be about that. Good looks don't last forever. You can either age gracefully or try to stop it. And I guess I would just rather it not be a factor at all. would much prefer to be remembered for what I do than the way I look. And it's weird <laughs> understanding that I'm asexual and the way that I think about certain things is not the way that other people often see them. Like I mentioned in my last coloring video, it's like I don't have the experience of seeing somebody and being sexually attracted to them. I do not know what that feels like. So I would prefer if nobody saw me that way. Even thinking about me hearing others put me in a romantic light, it makes me very uncomfortable. So if I can do what I can to steer people away from seeing me that way and helping them understand that it makes me uncomfortable, well, that's at least something that I can try. Oh, well, hmm, I 
guess our hour is up already. <laughs> Still so much to do. Well, I hope my cat interrupting wasn't too much of a disturbance and my phone telling me that there's work available wasn't <laughs> that annoying either. I hope the cut won't be too jarring. But anyway, here's a little work done and I think I'll probably continue this again sometime. So, thanks for watching.